Hello, welcome, and I'm Luis Gallardo, and I'm here with uh, Dr. Eddie Shiro. She's a clinic, clinical psychologist uh, in Miami, is an expert on post-traumatic growth and trauma. And actually, we are uh, very interested on this topic because during the World Happiness Week, which is going to be on March 18th to the 23rd, we want to unlock suffering. We really want to see and look at suffering from multiple angles, and we want to understand after all these almost 12 months of pandemic, how life has changed for almost everybody around the world. As, as a humanity, we are really, really gone through a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. So thank you to Dr. Eddie Shiro. We are going to talk now about what are the roots of suffering, why we are suffering so much, and what can we do? And then during the week, we are going to be focusing on suffering every day, looking at it from different angles. But let's start with Edith Zero. Thank you so much for your expertise. <laughs> and we talk a lot, a, a lot about this topic. <laughs> but there is nobody like Edith that actually can help us to understand and unlock what is suffering. And actually, the first question that I have, Edith, is can we, can we really talk about happiness? Can we be happy when there is so much suffering going on? Yes, thank you so much. This is such a pleasure to do this interview. And you and I always talk about how can we do the World Happiness Fest or how can we have that in the middle of so much suffering in the middle of a year of pandemic? It's a great question. And the answer depends. Suffering is part of the human condition. And this is not just on the, pan on the year of the pandemic. Maybe during this year has become even more relevant. There's a lot of loss, a lot of death, a lot of grief and a lot of pain. That doesn't mean that that has not happened in the past and this is not part of how we are and who we are as human beings. It's how we affront and how we deal with suffering that really is the question. What we do with it? What kind of attitude we have in front of suffering? You know, we have Viktor Frankl, mm -hmm. who I always uh, use as an example, who is a Holocaust survivor, concentration camp survivor, and says, it's not the trauma that you have, it's not what happens to you, it's the attitude that you choose to face the trauma that you're living. So the big question is like, yes, we can have happiness, but what is the, what is the choice, the choices that we're making in our lives every day to deal with challenges, suffering and pain that we're experiencing? So this is fantastic. Something that I, I um, that I like to, and the way I like to frame things when, when you're in this case talking about trauma and suffering, is really understanding the the roots mm -hmm. first. W why why do we suffer, and then what are the phases of suffering? Mm -hmm. Can we talk a bit more about the roots of suffering? Yeah, I think me, listen from a psychological perspective, the roots of suffering, to my understanding, is really the early attachment. We, we actually come into this world with trauma. There's not just the big traumas like accidents and loss and death, but we have the uh, trauma of everyday life. Mm -hmm. You know, every day there are things that might be uh, bringing us uh, struggle and pain and grief. So where is the suffering coming from? There's the original attachment in which we are as, as children and as babies needing the connection with uh, our mothers or with the adult that is our caretaker. And when we don't have the good enough mother, the good enough environment to hold uh, the emotional needs, the physical needs and the uh, spiritual needs of, of, of our in our childhood, we tend to um, connect with this uh, sense of um, loss and lack of belonging mm -hmm. and lack of uh, acceptance in ourselves. So we see ourselves as not good enough. We see ourselves as abandoned, rejected, uh, not not nobody loves us. These are all like really the source. Some of the sources of of uh, individual suffering and trauma. And then when we put it in the collective, in our system, then we have all these connections with our 
original families of parents, with our community, with the, with the, with the culture that we're in, that really uh, reinforces those, those uh, losses and those traumas of like, we're not being accepted, we're being criticized, we're being um, rejected, we're being um, abused. Or, or disrespected, or we don't have a sense of belonging. These are all sources of suffering that if we don't attend to it, they only become stronger and stronger and stronger. And we, we develop like layers of defensiveness, defensiveness that doesn't allow us to connect with our essence and with ourselves. We also have the Buddhist perspective of suffering, mm -hmm. right? That you, you and I talk about, which is, we, what's it called? Dukkha, yes, right? Yes, Dukkha. And what does the Buddhism say is that there's like a attachment, yes. right? And grief. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and, and if we desire too many things or too much, right, then we're constantly in the suffering. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, the framework is always about desire mm -hmm. and ignorance. Exactly. So, so ignorance and desire are, the, are actually the, 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 the big roots right. of suffering. Desire of something that normally uh, is going to be attached to something that you might not need in, in, in a certain time and, and, and basically the ignorance not to know how to detach. So both, both roots and uh, in that case are, are very interesting. But, but actually something that when we explore suffering in this moment mm -hmm. that is very interesting and this is what we are going to be exploring during the World Happiness Week is that I feel for the first time, the whole humanity is suffering at the same time. Yeah. So probably there is no one single corner of the world where there is nobody feeling suffering. Not just because of what is the pain that they are having, is about their families, it's about what they are getting that is going on in so many other places. True. So how, how can we understand this collective trauma? Because this is quite unique, what is going on right now in humanity, right? Yes, I mean, this is a definitely collective trauma. It's not the first time that largest group of people uh, experience trauma. But yes, this is such a global experience that I think in the same way that we define it as a collective experience, I think the healing from it has to be a collective healing at the same time. And it all, uh, the way I say it, it is based on relationships. Mm. In how are we relating first to ourselves, which is like the new mental health is a new self-care. The new health care is a new self-care, meaning how do we relate to our partners, how we relate to our core workers, how we relate to our children, to our families, to our friends. And if we don't attend to that, then we're missing on that very uh, source of suffering how, because we are going to keep being in, in lack and in hurt and in pain and in disconnection. Wow. So we are going to have uh, this year exploring uh, trauma, suffering, and growth post-trauma during the World Happiness Week together with more than 150 experts from all over the world. But can you give us a, a few tips now about uh, what we can expect during the week, especially when we focus on growth? Because this is a big opportunity in many ways for so many people to grow and to move to spaces that probably wasn't, it wasn't possible before. Mm. So why growth is an opportunity now and why suffering is an opportunity to grow? Yeah, yes. I know it sounds uh, controversial to say that suffering is an opportunity, but sometimes the deeper we go, the higher we get, <laughs> you know? So if we are able to see a possibility within all of this pain and all of this suffering and all of this struggle as a, an, an openness to actually growth and that there's a light at the end of a tunnel and this is something in which is going to allow us to reconsider, reevaluate and uh, understand ourselves and others in a different way, this can become something quite big. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of why we can talk about happiness in the middle of so much suffering. Because if we understand challenges as opportunities to get at to another level, to uh, grow, to become more awakened, to become more conscious, then we welcome it in a different way. So the first thing to do is mm -hmm. to really sit with it instead of avoiding it, instead of denying it, instead of pretending it's not there to embrace it and to say, you know what, this is happening to me. 
I am going through trauma, not only individual, but collective. This is difficult for me. Explore the emotions, the feelings, the, the experiences that are happening in the moment instead of rushing and trying to normalize it, instead of pretending that it's not there, to really honor it and to understand from it and to learn from it, to see what can we get from there. And it's like a diving into your own pain, diving into your own suffering, that it becomes more relevant now than ever because there are no distractions. Luis, like yeah. right now, we don't have external distractions, so it's an incredible opportunity to really dive deep inside and not only with yourself, but in your relationships as well. And then from there, to consider a different point of view, which is my second, another tip, my second tip and yeah. saying, okay, how can I see this different? How can I open myself to maybe flow in a different way, to position myself from a different perspective and see this with a different set of values, a different set of principles, another narrative, and, and understand it in a different way. So if we're at work, mm -hmm. maybe this is not, you know, my working environment might not be doing so well this, right now, so how can I see it different? How can I adapt myself into a different place? From an, a school, mm -hmm. you know, education, from a, a mental health, how do we reevaluate our, um, our priorities and say what is really important right now? What can I let go? How can I let go of my sense of control, on, on my uh, fear of uh, uncertainty, of this ambiguous loss that we're in right now, mm -hmm. that it's neither this nor that, because these are all real uh, concepts and real experiences, and we can y use that. How can I see all of that and say, okay, I'm learning from this, and I'm t it's taking me to a higher level of consciousness, of wisdom, of freedom that maybe we didn't have before. Well, this is fantastic, uh, and this is just the beginning, because we are going to have a full week of uh, wisdom and reflection, and we are going to go deeper into how do we understand suffering, how do we understand growth, and how do we embrace it. So we are going to be bringing methodologies, tools, techniques, so many different elements that are going to help many of us in order to grow and to move to the next level. Uh, we need collective, collective healing. Definitely. We cannot do this alone. And that's the third tip. It's like we know we need to recognize that we're not isolated, that we're not alone, that we are constantly in relationships with ourselves and with the other. So using that to collectively heal and take our humanity to the next level. Well, this is an incredible opportunity, and that's why from the World Happiness Fest and the World Happiness Foundation, we really want to uh, open the dialogue uh, in a constructive way and making humans the center of growth for the world, the planet, and humanity itself. So you are super welcome. Uh, please share with us your ideas before the week so we can have many questions and many a opportunity to ask to all the experts that are going to be with us. So thank you so much, Edith. Thank you. And I see you in a few days <laughs> doing the World Happiness Fest. We'll wait for you there. <laughs> see you soon. <laughs>